Strategies for Anger. This is video five of a six part series. Let's get to it. Like and subscribe. Able to reframe our thoughts and to come away or move away from uh, thinking according to the victim mentality. And this is one of my uh, big things is uh, trying to steer people away uh, from the victim mentality. And, and when I start the uh, political series of videos, I'm going to do a, a series to talk about uh, politics and how things are twisted around. I'm going to talk about uh, the, the situation with Democrats and Republicans and uh, how it was historically and how it is now. Um, and, and, and in doing so, I'm not going to be pushing any particular political agenda. I do not. Um, follow either party, any of the political parties. I do not subscribe to their uh, uh, politics. I don't push their agendas. I will have some stuff from whatever party, you know, one party or the other that I may agree with. But if I agree with it, I agree with that particular thing. But I do not blindly uh, associate myself with or follow um, what they're pushing in a narrative. However, I believe that people do, you know, if they identify and I don't and, and again, I don't see I don't I don't have anything negative to say about anybody who subscribe to any political party, whether you are a Democrat or Republican or Tea Party or independent or whatever you consider yourself to be. It's all the same to me. Right. But I do have a problem with. Uh, us as a people as you know whether we talk about as minority members or if we talk about blacks in particular or we talk about as americans um getting into it and fighting each other over political parties that could care less about any of us and that mainly care about the, the politics so uh being able to change the way that we're thinking is going to be helpful so it says angry thoughts add fuel to your anger thinking things like i can't stand it uh this traffic jam is going to ruin everything uh will increase your frustration when you find yourself thinking about things that fuel your anger reframe your thoughts so again when it's talking about reframing your thoughts it's talking about uh uh looking at the situation from a different point or a different point of view Right is very helpful. So, for example, and it's interesting it mentioned you know the traffic jam and stuff like that because I am road rage man. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, and it, and it don't really make sense. Like a lot of us, we get angry in situations in the traffic, especially if you're in California, you happen to deal with the 91 freeway. Um, you know how bad it can get. Um, but there are, you know, thousands and thousands of people out there, even millions of people out there on the highway that are going through the same thing that you're going through, right? So thinking about the fact that, hey, you know what? There is nothing I can do about it. Um, sometimes it's helpful, right? And just trying to uh, get into a zone, right? Or even uh, what it talks about next here um, is changing the channel, right? So taking your mind into something else. You might put on some music that you like to listen to. You might listen to a, a podcast or um, maybe, a, um, you know, if you're a religious person, you might uh, play some of your, you know, spiritual uh, stuff or something like that, right? Ruminating about an upsetting, upsetting situation fuse angry feelings. If, for example, you had a bad day at work, Rehashing everything that went wrong all evening will keep you stuck in a state of frustration. And sometimes when people uh, go to talk through their anger or like above where I mentioned about um, talking to a friend and you just going over and over um, what happened and just talking about it and, 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 and just saying again and again what happened, it's not going to help. We need to focus or try to focus on a solution, not just. Uh, the problem. The best way to calm down may be to change the channel in your brain and focus on something else altogether. So again, 
just getting away from that that subject matter until you have an, an opportunity to calm down so you get away from that and just go into something else that's totally unrelated telling yourself don't think about that isn't always successful the best way to mentally shift gears is to distract yourself with an activity so again doing something else that um that requires you to occupy your mind with a different subject so again whether it's um you know doing something you like doing maybe you're an artist right and you start uh drawing some art or you know playing a video game or whatever right but something so that you're not focused on uh whatever it was that uh got you angry in the first place right also as we are um trying to reframe and and trying to think about it a different way we should be again trying to de-escalate and by nature that means we're trying to relax right so we're actually focusing on relaxation and trying to uh even picture and visualize relaxation within our body right and that's what uh the next section uh the next part brings us to it says focus on relaxation there are many different anger management exercises that involve relaxation the key is to find one that works best for you breathing exercises and progressive muscle relaxation are two uh common strategies for reduce for reducing tension right so breathing exercises in the previous video i talked about that as well but um so when we talk about breathing exercises again you're breathing taking deep controlled breaths intentionally right and and as you're taking these deep breaths you're not hyperventilating you know taking the short breaths you're taking slow controlled breaths and you focus on not only just breathing as you're breathing in and out, you're focused also on your, you know, relaxing your body, having your body relax. The breathing helps us to incorporate more oxygen into our bloodstream, which in turn carries more oxygen to the brain. We want that because it's going to help us to clear our mind and help us to think more clearly. Right. Also, it mentioned um, progressive muscle relaxation and there's a couple of different ways uh, people do this with tension and without tension. And when they say with tension and without tension, so with tension, you're you're literally tensing up. Like as you are before you relax each uh, particular muscle group, you're you're tensing up the muscles first. You you begin to uh, tense the muscles, then relax them. Tense them, then relax them. While at the same time, you're going through your uh, breathing exercises, right? This is very helpful. And as you practice it over time, you'll be surprised at um, how beneficial it can be as far as helping you to de-escalate and to calm down. It's important to note, however, that relaxation uh, exercises take practice. And that's uh, exactly what I was saying, because the first time you do something and, and, and I'll do um, a video also where we uh, practice like some relaxation techniques, however, the first time when you're trying to practice a relaxation technique, sometimes it's not very relaxing. It's more irritating than relaxing because, number one, um, we come into it with preconceived notion that it's not going to work, right? That it's pointless. It's not going to help. Or maybe the, the first couple of times, especially if you, you know, watching a video on it, you're kind of like, ah, this shit ain't going to help. And, and you never actually try to practice whatever it is that they're doing. You just kind of watch them. And then you just determine that eh, it's not going to be helpful for you. Right. And, and if that's all you do, then, of course, it's not going to be helpful for you. You have to actually do something right. And in life, that's how we're successful. That's how we become successful by actually doing something right. Stepping out there uh, and getting something done. Um, OK, the next thing it talks about, explore your feelings. So when it talks about exploring your feelings, um again this is important because a lot of times if if i'm becoming angry about a situation my anger is generally the result of other underlying emotions right it may not be uh uh just focused on you know whatever the initial or the provocative event that is immediately in front of me, right? So um, let's say I'm angry because let's say somebody ran into my car, right? 
uh, just kind of just side swiped it, ran into the car, messed it up or what have you. So, of course, you know, you get a little angry about that. They messed up your car and, and stuff like that. But um, I also need to recognize if there are other issues going on that cause me to be even more angry or cause my anger to escalate. Um, again, one of the reasons that's important is that's why a lot of times we uh, blow situations out of proportion. So we may have a seemingly small incident where somebody, you know, does something out of line, but we take it way far beyond uh, where it needed to go. And sometimes the reason for that is we were already going through some stuff before that person did whatever it was that they done. Now, we may have still gotten angry, even if we weren't going through some stuff, but we probably would have dealt with the situation differently. So it's important for us to look at our feelings and to do it on a regular basis and not just wait till we get angry. 